Welcome back to Good Morning Football here live in Indianapolis. The man you see right here has been a friend of our program for five years. When you guys were on Hard Knocks that summer, we started having Jason Light on. And in that time, not only have the Buccaneers gone to the playoffs multiple times, they've also won a Super Bowl. And now it all comes full circle. We're back at the Combine. Jason Light, great to see you on Good Morning Football. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. This is it. Uh, it's going to just be you and me. It's going to be a conversation. The guys are back in studio. They love you. They all send their regards. But all eyes are on, obviously, number 12, who announced his retirement less than a month ago. We think the retirement. I don't know. We'll see. Where are we at in Tampa Bay right now as far as the quarterback position goes and bidding farewell to Mr. Brady? Wow. Tom is a special player, special person. We've had a great two years here. Um, right now, we're you know trying to make our plans to move forward, um, if that's the case that we need to move forward on. And um, you know, there's a lot of things that we still have to get. There's a lot of time here. Well, a couple weeks before free agency starts. You got the draft. You got post draft. We've added players after the draft in the past. Some significant impact players after the draft and after free agency. So um, we're still in that process right now. Yeah, I go back two years. So let's go back February 2020. The Combine's going on. The Buccaneers. Jameis Winston was a free agent. Teddy Bridgewater was a name. Tom Brady was looming. And you go in, and then by March, all of a sudden, Tom Brady's a Buccaneer. Did you know at the Combine two years ago, at this stage, that Brady was even a possibility? Was that Were those conversations happening? Now that it's over, can we go back and open the book and be like, when did that all really start going down? No, you know, it was, he was, it was in our plans. We, were, he was, we had to have door number one, door number two, door number three, all those different things kind of converging at once, and it came to a head when free agency started. So... At this point that year, we had no idea. It was in the same, really knew about as much as you did. Yeah. And, and uh, so it, it came to a head as soon as free, free, agent, free agency started. And, and man, what a day that was. And what's this franchise like now with Brady now on the way out to then before he got here? What kind of impact did he leave on not only the players, but the organization as a whole? Well, tremendous. When we, when we signed him, we, we talked about that, how the impact that he was going to have, me having firsthand experience being in New England with him for seven years, what he's done for them and what he's done for us is just that it's built a winning culture along with our coaching staff and BA of course but um, built a winning culture um, set the standard very high and now everyone knows what the standard is and everyone works a little a lot harder yeah. at reaching that standard yeah and you look at the veterans in that building whether it's Levante David or Mike Evans and you almost feel like now that they've got that Super Bowl, there's almost a different air to those guys not only in the building but around the league yeah, absolutely. Um, it's definitely a different feel in our building. And it started, um, I would say, you know, even pre-Brady when, when Bruce came on board and, um, and then Brady. And then all of a sudden we do have we have a ton of players that we owe um, credit for getting us where we have been in the last couple of years. It's not just Tom, but um, Tom's brought the best out of everybody. So Blaine Gabbert's a free agent at the moment. Kyle Trask, you guys selected in the third round. For the viewers at home and maybe Bucks fans, like, what did you guys see from Kyle Trask? Because maybe he isn't the starter, but at least we know he's on the roster right now. What are we getting from him after one year of learning from Brady, the greatest of all time? Well, Kyle was a really productive, prolific SEC quarterback. Uh, we took him last year in the second round. We felt like we got great value with him. We love everything that we've seen from him this year. He's soaked it in behind Tom, behind Blaine, behind Ryan Griffin, some veterans, really smart veteran quarterbacks. And then to see what it takes to reach a high level um, with Tom um, has been, uh, you know, it's just invaluable. Um, he's got a good arm. He's very smart. He works very hard. So I'm very excited to see what he can do for us this offseason. Yeah, it's it's an opportunity for him, and we'll see what you guys do. If there's a free agent you bring in, and we'll have to assess it after that. I find the NFC South really interesting right now because Brady leaves, and it's like, all right, it's wide open, right? And it's like, no, actually, the Buccaneers still have a lot of core players on that roster, but you do have several free agents. And as you go into this week and then free agency in a couple of weeks, not that you have to list your priorities, but we know the names. We've seen them, whether it be Gronk or Godwin or so many of these other talented players. Where do you kind of set the stage here and say, hey, are we rebuilding or are we, are we still in this thing where we can win even without Tom Brady as our quarterback? Yeah, we still feel like we have a chance to, to win this year. And we're in a division where we think we can compete. Um, we have a lot of players that are free agents, but we're, and we have a lot of priorities. It's just going to, just depends on how the puzzle fits together. We, we want to we wanna win this year. We want to compete this year for the, for the title. Um, but we also want to keep our eye on the future, too. We don't want to mortgage too much 
um, too soon. Yeah. So it's just going to depend on how what the market bears. But yeah. we're going to try to bring some of these, a lot of these guys back. This is not your first combine. You've been doing this for 20 plus years. Like, do you still get excited being here in Indy, looking at this and saying this is roster building time? This is where our GM really makes his bones. When you get here and you see the same hallways and the same faces, <laughs> does it still give you a thrill even after the Super Bowl championship with the Bucks? Yeah, it does. It's it's fun to be here. I was thinking about it on my way here today. This is my 27th year. 27. What um, teams were you with? It started with? Miami, Carolina, New England, Arizona, Philly, Arizona again, New England again. So, And I actually worked for the Combine for a couple years, too. Did so you work at, for the actual? For the actual NFS yeah. Combine. So I, I think I've almost logged a full year uh, in staying in hotels here. <laughs> in Indiana, so I don't know if that makes me a full-time resident or not. But, it, uh, yeah, so I've spent a lot of time here. I, I do like it. It's a great setup here. Yeah, and this draft class, I know you guys are drafting at the end of the first mm-hmm. round. Not a quarterback draft, not a running back draft, but a lot of big boys, a lot of pass rushers, a lot of offensive linemen. How would you assess this draft class as a whole? Um, you know, there's some good skill on offense. Uh, there's some good edge players on defense. Um, there's some good skill players on defense as well. It's, um, I would say it's not super heavy at the top, but there's a lot of good mid-round picks, I think, that are going to be had this year. Yeah, and I think, you know, Daniel Jeremiah does a lot of the work, and you know Daniel well, and he was saying, you know, top 20 might be up for grabs, but from... 30 to 90, guys can go in any sort of order right now because there's such depth at those positions. And I think that's exciting for a GM because, you know, as much as it's about Brady and, and, and obviously Gronk, a lot of those guys were homegrown on that championship team, and they're still homegrown. And it's really built here at the Combine. Yeah, it sure is. We've, uh, you know, we've had a lot of players that we've taken in those mid-rounds uh, that we you know, got excited about pre-Combine, but then post-Combine, even more excited about. Ali Marpet was one of them. So, being a, uh, we took him in the second round, a D3 kid from Hobart. and That won't throw you off? I know he retired or announced his retirement. Did you see that coming, or was that a well, surprise? Well, we'd, we had heard for a little while that um, he was contemplating this. So, um, didn't come as a complete surprise on Sunday, but yeah. um, it, just happy for him. You know, goes out on top. Do you have your phone with you? Because I think we should FaceTime Brady and just <laughs> not, not beg, <laughs> not plead, but you and I are pretty convincing guys. You've convinced really big name free agents to come. I have convinced Kay and Kyle to drink coffee in the morning at ungodly hours. Do you think maybe we could put him on? <laughs> we'll see what the future holds. We'll, uh, let's just say we'll leave the light on. Is there hope? Honestly, is the light on? Is there hope? <laughs> we always leave the light on for a guy yeah. like Tom Brady. That's it. We'll leave the light on for you. As we speak hotels here in Indianapolis, that's the perfect way to end it. I'm so happy to have you on. Jason Light, Super Bowl winning GM of not only the New England Patriots on their staff, but now a general manager of your own team with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A new era for the Bucks right now. We're so excited to have you on here. I appreciate it. All right, guys.